yes oh yes it's uncle jegs and in today's video we'll be looking at the water purification required practical i'll first touch on what portable water is and how we make portable water then we'll look at how water can be purified from salty water this includes a reverse osmosis and then finally we will look at the required practical itself check the timestamps below to jump to exactly what you need and also get today's worksheet below yeah and also the answer to the previous videos worksheet all right let's keep that tank portable water comes from the latin word meaning to drink so portable water just means that water that is safe to drink bear in mind that this is very different from saying pure water look at these three samples one of these is pure water one is portable water and one is just straight up dirty water portable water shouldn't have any pathogens and so we can eliminate this one that dirty water over there technically both of these are portable water because they're safe, they're safe to drink and you can't get sick from them but pure water only has water particles inside it pure water is the same as distilled water or deionized water clock the name my g Distilled water has undergone the process of distillation. We will look at that in more detail in a bit. Deionized water doesn't have any ions inside it. So both of these mean that the water is 100% pure. Tap water and bottled water aren't exactly examples of pure water because they have dissolved ions inside them. Our portable water is made from these steps here. First, water from a reservoir is passed through special filters of sand and gravel. They remove particles of mud and grit from the sample. Larger screens then trap larger objects like leaves and twigs. This filtered water then passes into a settlement tank and the sand and soil that were too small to be filtered out, they settle at the bottom. Then you have aluminium sulfate and lime. These are added to clump up the spinal particles of dirt so that they can easily settle to the bottom. The water is then sterilized either using chlorine, ozone or UV light. The last step then is to check that the pH is correct, so close to neutral and then that can be pumped into our water systems. Well that's all good if you're on ends, but imagine if you're loose boiling on some desert island and all you have is seawater. Hopefully you know that you're finished if you drink that. Since the concentration of salt is so high in seawater, drinking it will actually make your large intestine work harder to absorb water so you end up getting dehydrated. And if you ain't got no coconut, you gon' die. <laughs> no worries though, you just have to use some method of desalination. Desalination is the conversion of salty water to portable water and there are two ways of doing this distillation and reverse osmosis distillation works on the principle that different substances have different boiling points common table salt sodium chloride has a boiling point of roughly 1500 degrees celsius and we know that water boils at 100 degrees so when we heat up salty water the water molecules will first vaporize at 100 degrees celsius then if you have a vessel that can cool down the steam the water vapor can condense to form pure water and you've got that salt that won't be boiling anytime soon removed from your sample now reverse osmosis doesn't require heat but you do need a whole lot of water pressure to pattern this remember that osmosis is the movement of water from a low concentration solution to a high concentration solution check my video on osmosis to get up to speed on that so reverse osmosis is essentially what it says on the tin we are reversing the process so water is moving from a high concentration solution so where there's bare solute particles to a low concentration solution so we can have portable water the problem with these two methods though the, um, desalination these two methods of desalination is that they require quite a bit of energy so yeah i'm um, sorry if you are on that desert island yeah just hope it rains the required practical is split into two activities the first will have you analyzing a sample of water and then purify your sample of water via distillation look at the results table for the first activity we are going to measure the ph of three water samples but only measure the mass of salt dissolved in the first sample you can use a ph meter to get an accurate ph number but if your school ain't boiling like that you can use universal indicator paper you do that for each of your samples yeah 
you then weigh an empty evaporating basin on a scale. Make sure you record to two decimal places, yeah? You then pour about 10 centimeters cubed of your sample to your basin and strongly heat it until the majority of the water has evaporated. Then leave it to cool and calculate the mass of the solid formed by taking your initial mass away from your final mass. The next activity is pretty well straightforward. You just need to distill some salty water. You place your water sample into a conical flask like this diagram is showing. You then place a beaker with ice water on the other side. Then you place an empty test tube here. This is where your pure water will condense inside. You heat your water until it boils and then reduce the heat. The water vapour will start condensing on the other side over here because your ice water cools the surrounding cool enough for your water to condense from gas to liquid. You then go and check this pH of this water and then you check if it has any dissolved substances inside it by evaporating it and if it's just pure water there should be nothing there. And that ladies and gentlemen them is it for this video check out the work in the description and if you're still baffed use the timestamps to skip to what you need to like comment bell and all that jazz and don't forget that science is more than just a body of knowledge more importantly it's a way of thinking think big in a bit.